I'm so excited about today. Today is a great day, and I want to welcome everybody that has come out. Thank you so much for being here. You know, we've been learning about Mind Monsters. Mind Monsters, that's the series that we're in. And if today is your first day uh, here at Momentum, I want to tell you, you could not have come on a better day. Today's a great day. Now, what are Mind Monsters? What in the world are Mind Monsters? Well, Mind Monsters are the negative thoughts that produce negative emotions that we all deal with. Mind monsters are those negative thoughts and those negative emotions that every one of us deal with. And so in this series, I'm asking you a question, and that question is simply this. What overcomes you? What overcomes you? I guess it was like a a little over a week, maybe a week and a half ago, I asked people on Facebook, I said, hey, I'm studying, I'm getting ready uh, for our new series, Mind Monsters, and I need your help. And I asked the question, what do you, what do you worry about? What, tell me some of your worries. What are those things that you worry about? And you know, that's what, that's what a mind monster is. A mind monster might be a worry. It might be a worry. It might be a fear. It might be depression. It might be anger. It might be rejection or loneliness. It might be negative self-talk. You know, those thoughts that you've been thinking, they've been reoccurring over and over and over again in your mind for some time. Mind monsters, here's the truth. We all have them. So help me out real quick. I want you to turn to the person beside you right now. That's right, everybody. That's right, help us out in the bar. Come on, Gulf Breeze. Guys, you can help us in Blackwater. And if you're watching online, you can help us also. Uh, Turn to the person beside you and say, I I know you got some mind monsters. I know you got some. The truth is we all, that's right, I know you got some. We all have mind monsters. Now, here's the thing. The truth is we don't have to keep them. And that's what the series is about. Like, what do we do with mind monsters? So the question is, what overcomes you? Are you overcome by worry? Are you a worry wart? Have you said that about yourself before? Well, you just know me. That's how I'm wired. I'm wired to worry. I just worry about everything. You know, you don't have to. In fact, the Bible has some things to say to help us with worry. The Bible has some things to say, whether you believe in Jesus or not, and I hope that you do, but but even if you're coming and you're like, man, I don't believe in the Bible stuff, but I'm coming with my family and, you know, I... I just, I'm here, you know, trying to keep the wife happy. Like, here's the truth. Here's why you need to listen today. You need to listen today because the truth is you have mind monsters and you've probably had some for a while. And here's the cool thing. You don't have to carry those mind monsters any longer. Here's here's the goal of the series is that is that we all agree in this and, and we all take a step and say, you know what, I can and I will overcome what overcomes me. So if you're overcome by fear or worry or anxiety or doubt, whatever it is, whatever that mind monster is that, that you know, it's almost like that mind monster is right at home. And, and that mind monster has made themselves right at home in your mind for too long. I want to tell you something. You can overcome what has overcome you, what has overcome you. And so in, in order to overcome what has overcome us, that is, in order to overcome a mind monster, first off, we, we got to do a couple of things. Number one, we have to recognize it. We have to recognize the enemy. We have to recognize the enemy. And we talked about in this series how that the truth is, it's easy for us to recognize mind monsters in other people. But we have blind spots. It is hard to see them. In ourselves I mean it's almost it's like they're invisible sometimes to us it's almost like we're too close to even see them sometimes or maybe maybe you do know you do know the mind monster because that mind monster has been scaring the mess out of you for many 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 years well we talked about four moves that can help you overcome what overcomes you and the first one is you have to recognize the enemy You have to recognize the enemy. The second one we talked about last week, and that was reject the lies. So the first step, recognize. Second step, you have to reject. Reject. You have to reject those lies. And last week, I was so proud of so many of you, and I I appreciate the messages on 
on Facebook and social media that many of you sent me. You said, you know what, like that was such a, a big moment for me. You know, like that was, that. It, it's a new day, Pastor Tim, because I shredded a lie that I've literally, it was a lie that I had bought a long time ago. And it was a lie that I brought with me from my past into my present. And so I'm so proud of you guys as many, many people shredded those lies. And that's how you reject the lies. You shred them. You got to recognize them. Then you reject them. It's a lie. It's a lie. And we talked about last week that, that just because, um, just because you, you have a thought, it doesn't mean that it's true. And I asked last week, like, what lies are you believing about yourself? I mean, right? That was the whole little review here. That was the whole last week is that so many of us have believed so many lies, like I'm not skinny enough, or I'm not pretty enough, or I'm not good enough, you know, I'm not enough, I'm, I'm not valuable, you know, I'm not loved, or, or I'll never, I'll never um, ever be married. Maybe you believe that lie, or I'll always be single, or, you know, I'll, uh, maybe, maybe in high school you found out you weren't cool enough, and so you've literally lived with that lie. Maybe you felt like you just didn't measure up. Maybe for years you believed the lie that you weren't beautiful. You weren't beautiful. Or maybe you carried. You carried the weight of the lie that it was your fault. Maybe those were some of the lies. But we talked about last week that all lies come from the father of lies. That the devil is a liar. He's been a liar from the beginning, the Bible says. And that's his character. He has no truth in him whatsoever. The devil is is a liar. Now turn back to that same person that you looked at and you said, I know that you have some mind monsters. All right. I want you to look back at them right now. That's why you go ahead and turn to them and say, the devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. Tell them that right now. The, The devil is a liar. Now here's the problem with lies. Lies land. They land early. They linger. They linger, right? They don't just land, but they linger. They last, but they don't have to. But the problem with lies is lies lead to identity. They lead to our identity. So last week was all about stop believing the lies. And in order to overcome that lie, in order to overcome that mind monster, you have to reject it. And that's what we did. So we learned the lie. We uh, lifted the lie. And how do we lift the lie? What does God say about me? Like what lies have I believed? And then what does God say about me? That's how we lift that lie, okay? So if I believe that I'm not worthy, God says something different. So I learn what God says, and then we leave the lie, and that's what we did when we shredded them. But today, I want to talk to you about something something incredible. This really is the third move that you and I can make to overcome what overcomes us, and that is replace the negative. Let's talk about some of these negative thoughts. Some of these negative thoughts that you and I have had for a long time. The truth is, is that all of us at a point or another have carried a distorted belief system. That's right. It's negative thinking. Maybe maybe someone labeled you when you were younger. Maybe you struggled in school. And you had a hard time in school and you, and you struggled, you struggled. And so people just said, you are stupid. You're so stupid. And you believe that. You believe that and you carried that from, from third grade or you carry that from first grade or fifth grade and you carry that all the way in, whether you're in high school right now or even if you're an adult, you carried that with you. The truth is we all have distorted belief systems that need to be replaced. I want to tell you this quick story. So um, about a year ago, I knew that it would it would be time to get a new phone. I'd had this phone for a while and um, had my phone for a couple years, right? And uh, I didn't want to buy a new phone. In fact, I went in like last good night, last fall, a year ago, I went in to buy a new phone. And when I went in, it was it was like buying honest to god it it seemed more uh complicated than buying a car i mean it was it was just crazy and i walked out and i thought you know what i'll wait i'll wait I wait, you know, I, I, I got the thing, you know, I'm with AT&T and I, I got the thing where I can replace it, you know, like every year and I can get the new phone that comes out, but it was so complicated. 
I just literally that night, I, I just, you know, you know what I'm talking about. It's like when your mind, right? And that's what we're talking about today, our mind. In fact, the title of the message today is Mind Control, Mind Control. And I felt like my mind, man, was just like fried. I just didn't have any more margin. So I told the sales guy, give me your card and I promise you I'll buy the phone from you. I'll come back and I'll get it from you, but I'll probably wait for the new iPhone. Well, fast forward. So here it is. And this, uh, this last week, this last week, I had my phone, it's busted up, it's cracked, and I needed it to be replaced. And I'm, I'm in the gym, I'm in the gym, my phone is, is on the ledge right there, the bench, and, and, and I'm doing these flies, and somehow my phone had fallen off, and so I finished the fourth set, I'm like, oh man, I'm telling you, I felt the pump, but, but I also, man, I just felt dead. I felt dead. I was just exhausted. This was at the end of the workout, and I just felt dead. And so I dropped the two 15-pound dumbbells, and yeah, that's exactly what happened. That 15-pound dumbbell crushed my phone. It hit on my iPhone, and it landed on the home button, okay? Well, that's really, that's really important because of what happened. So I asked Matt after I bought my new phone, I said, Matt, can you help me? You know, I'm having a hard time getting into iCloud and, and, uh, man, I really need your help. I I need, I need my phone to sync. And, uh, the problem was my old iPhone. It wasn't working, right? Because it was busted. It was busted up. And because it busted it, I could not, I could not access my information. And the problem was I got a brand new phone that was awesome. But I needed to replace the old phone with the new one. And I needed all my information on, the, on my old phone to get to the new one. Well, let me tell you what. It was a mess. It was so crazy. I mean, Matt worked for 12 hours on it. And he couldn't get the data off. We couldn't get into iCloud. You know, right? We have so many passwords. And so, man, I, I thought I, this is the password. Well, that wasn't working. And so... Man, Matt worked so hard. I mean, he just wasn't giving up. Literally, he got that phone, I think it was like 2 in the afternoon, and we stayed at the office till like 11.30 at night. And then he worked He worked another half day on it. And it was so crazy. And, and I mean, I'm not, I'm not a computer genius, but basically, here was the deal. The deal was my laptop had an old operating system on it, and they had to uninstall that. And then they had to install a new one on it. They had to do the same thing with my old phone, but it wasn't working. And so as you can imagine, it took so much time. I mean, they, iTunes was really the problem and the, the, my computer and the new phone wouldn't communicate. It wouldn't communicate. They wouldn't talk to each other. So, so anyways, long story short, Matt got it fixed. I'm like, Matt, dude, you are awesome. Finally, we got everything on iCloud. Everything was was perfect. But you know what it it did? It reminded me how that just like I had to replace that phone and I thought it was going to be easy. I thought that process was going to be easy. The truth is not even purchasing it. We're we're just talking about transferring the data over, right? Because I did have iCloud. I had all that there, but we couldn't access it. The truth is, just like I thought that that would be simple and be easy, it wasn't. It was complex. And I think when it comes to replacing negative thoughts, the same thing is true. I think all of us get into it saying, yeah, yeah, Pastor Tim, mind monsters. I want mind monsters gone. And then we we begin to start the process, right? We recognize them and then we reject them and now we decide to replace them. But I want to tell you something. It's a little more complex, maybe, than what you think. And the deal is, is because it's a process. It's a process, but it's worth it. Why is it worth it? It's worth it because eventually you can overcome what overcomes you. Let me read this verse real quick. Here in Proverbs, Proverbs, I'm reading from the message. Here in Proverbs 14, verse 30, it says this, A sound mind, a sound mind. Now, we read those two words in another place. In, in fact, in 2 Timothy 1.7, it says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. Someone say power. Love. Say love. And a sound mind. 
That's so important. God wants you and I to have a sound mind. Well, we know our thoughts originate in the mind, but out of our thoughts are birth our feelings, our emotions, and from that comes our behavior. So listen to what Proverbs says, 14 verse 30 in the message. A sound mind makes for a robust body, but runaway emotions corrode the bones. Did you see that? Right there in the Bible, God reveals that our mind leads to our emotions. Our mind leads to our emotions. And that's why it's so important that we realize that the battle is in the mind. Now, last week, I really pushed this book. I pushed this book right here. This is a great book, Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce Meyer. We sold out at every campus. And I believe we're going to have some more today. So I want you to go get that book. And I want you to read that book. Listen, if you buy that book and it just sits there and you never read it, it's not going to help you. So I want you to buy that book and then I want you to read it. I want you to read it. Get that truth in your mind. Because if we're going to replace the negative, we have to replace it with something. Right? And so it's very important. I'm so thankful now for my new iPhone. It is working. Matt did a great job. He got it up and running. He saved the day. Literally, it's crazy, isn't it? How our world revolves around this. But I replaced the old with the new. And that is exactly what I want you to do. I want you to replace those old belief systems, those old, stale, maybe crusty or corroded thoughts and thought patterns, that negative self-talk. I mean, here's the truth, right? Track with me. Here's the truth. We would never talk to other people the way we talk to ourselves. I mean, sometimes we talk to ourselves and our thoughts so bad. We never treat someone else like that. Listen, we got to replace the old with the new. It's time for an upgrade. Someone say upgrade. That's right. It's time for an upgrade. So last week I told you about the battlefield for the mind. And I also mentioned this book that I said, you know what? Here's another resource that will really help you. And that is the new Bible cure for depression and anxiety. We have these today. If you listen to me, if you struggle with depression or if you've ever struggled with it, maybe you're walking in victory right now. That's awesome. But if you've ever struggled with depression or anxiety, the two are connected. I want you to go get this book. It's written by a doctor, um, Don Colbert. He's, I mean, just, I hope he's familiar to you. If he's not, let me tell you what, he is, he is awesome. Um, He's got a lot of great books out there that'll help set you free. This thing right here is so practical. It's so small. It's an easy read, man. You can get into it. And what will happen is you'll replace the old with the new. So here we go. If we're going to replace the negative, we're going to replace the negative. How do we do that? Pastor Tim, give me some practical steps to how I replace the negative. Okay. Well, I kind of touched on it a little bit last week. And this really is, is the first of three today. First of three steps in how do we replace our negative thoughts. Number one, ask the Holy Spirit. When you and I gave our life to Jesus, when we invited God to come into our life, you know, at the end of every message, I always say something like this. I say, Lord, I give you my life and I receive your life. Now teach me how to live. That's what we're talking about. So this first step to replace the negative is remember the Holy Spirit or ask the Holy Spirit. He lives inside of you. He came in when you said, I give you my life and I receive your life. God's life is God's spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. And he lives inside of you. If you've given your life to Christ, you and I have the Holy Spirit and he's known as the comforter. But he not only comforts us, you know what he wants to do? He wants to control our mind. There it is mind control. See, if we don't control our mind, our mind will control us. And how do we control our mind? Here's how you do it. You submit, just like you would submit a paper, high schooler, or maybe you're in college, you submit a project, you submit 
your mind to the Holy Spirit. That's how we do it. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you and he will help you control your mind. Here's the verse. Romans 8, 6. Romans 8, 8, 6 says this. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. That means if we say, well, I just, I've always thought this way. It's just, you know, well, that's just how I'm wired. I just, I just think that way. I'm a negative person. It's going to lead to death. You with me? That's not a good place. That's a dead end. It's not where we want to go. And I'm thankful that the verse didn't stop there. I'm thankful for the next part. It says, but letting or allowing or submitting the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, letting the Holy Spirit control your mind, it leads somewhere. Where does it lead? It leads to life and it leads to peace. Now Jesus said, I've come that you can have life and you can have more life. How do we experience our life? It starts in our mind. It starts right here. So how do we do it? We allow the Holy Spirit to control our mind. How do we do that? We ask Him for help. The beginning of your day, Holy Spirit, control my mind. Please control my mind. So if we're going to replace negative thoughts with new thoughts, with better thoughts, number one, we have to ask the Holy Spirit to help us. All right? We have to ask Him to help us. Number two, we have to uninstall and reinstall. We have to uninstall, just like my phone, just like, I mean, Matt, I mean, he's like, iTunes was a problem. We finally figured it out. We had to get on my uh, laptop, which had an old operating system. So they had to uh, take that out. Then they had to uninstall it. Then they had to reinstall a new one. We had to get into my phone, my old phone, where the home button was cracked and he couldn't just use it because it wasn't working. And then finally it worked after like 12 hours. I mean, the whole thing was shattered and Matt's like, oh, please. And he's working so hard, you know. And uh, so he had to get into that. He had to uninstall the old so he could replace it with the new. That's the same thing. That's true for you and I. We have to uninstall the old, the old way of thinking, right? So that we can reinstall a new operating system. Let me ask you something. Are you willing to do this? Are you willing to invite God into the process? And are you willing to say, Holy Spirit, I need your help because I can't do this on my own. I want to tell you something. It, it made my head hurt just hearing how complicated the troubleshooting process was for Matt to go through everything he went through so that I could have what I needed. I could not have done that on my own. I needed Matt. Matt reached out to Jason. Jason's one of our friends. He works for Apple. He's a, he's a genius, man. He he is uh, he's just as smart as they come. And Matt and I, uh, really Matt, <laughs> talked to Jason. Was like, man, what's going on here? And Jason helped walk Matt through the process. That's what the Holy Spirit will do. He'll come alongside you and I, and he will help us. So just like Matt was there to help me. Just like Jason was there to help Matt navigate, navigate through the process. I want to tell you some great news. The Holy Spirit is right there wanting and willing to help you. But you got to ask. And he will help you uninstall those negative thought patterns. You know what I'm talking about? You've thought this way for years. In fact, when something happens, maybe, maybe you're quick to jump to negativity. Maybe you're quick to jump to thinking the worst, right? Maybe fear is, is the operating system and it's an old operating system that has been there for a long time, too long. And so whenever, whenever your children don't come home on time, immediately your mind races and it runs, right? It runs with fear and all of a sudden you think, oh my gosh, maybe they had an accident or this happened or, right? And, and so that old operating system has to go and we have to uninstall it and the way to do that is to ask the holy spirit to help you and then allow him to reinstall a new fresh thinking system all right and he can do that listen listen to this philippians philippians 4 8 says this and i read this verse last week but i want to dig into it just a little bit philippians 4 8 says this and now here it is dear brothers and sisters one final thing. 
and we remember normally the beginning and the end, right? Like, like, and, and so he says, here's one final thing. And he's drawing attention to this because this one final thing is like the thing. So this is like the final thing. Listen up here. Fix your thoughts. This is what Paul says. or He, he says here in Philippians to the uh, Philippian church, he says this, listen to him at Philippi. He says, listen all, listen, 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 guys. Our thinking has got to be fixed. In other words, we have got to think about what we think about. We got to fix it. How do we fix it? Well, just like my phone was fixed. We got to get the old out. We got to get the new in. And so he says, fix your thoughts. We got to fix your thinking. We got to fix your thinking. Sometimes we have old operating thinking systems and it's nothing more than stinking thinking. And we got to get rid of it. We got to fix our thinking. Now in this verse, fix, some versions say meditate or dwell or think continually. So this isn't just a one-time thing. This isn't like, man, I'm going to get victory the very first time. And from then it's easy, easy money, man. It's, it's great sailing. No, no, no. It, this is every day. It's a battlefield for the mind. You're going to face that battle. You're going to fight that battle every day. And, and Paul says this, listen, now brothers, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable and right, pure and lovely and admirable. Here it is. Think about things that are excellent and worthy, worthy of praise. Think about those things. So now let's, uh, let's bring a little application into it. Maybe when you were a child, you were not allowed to be angry. The problem was your parents modeled it. Like it was not right for you to do it, but it was okay when they did it. I was actually on the soccer field last night and I was watching a parent and a kid. And the kid, the kid got upset. The kid got angry at another kid. And so that kid pushed him really hard. He got angry and he pushed this other kid. His parent, parents actually, were on the, on, on the side of the field. We we're having practice, they're over here. And they got angry at him for getting angry. In fact, they were angrier than he was. I'm talking about explosive anger. Now that's, a, that's something that can stick with you for a while. If you were a kid and you weren't ever allowed to be angry, but mom and dad are always angry. They're just angry. Then you know what? That can be a thought pattern, a thinking pattern that can last with you for a long time. In fact, it can create and shape thoughts that literally will walk right beside you right into adulthood. Maybe this. I heard a story about a girl who, when she was like five years old, she was molested by her older brother. What she thought to herself was that it was her fault. And she carried that belief. You see, that belief, that thought popped into her mind. And we said last week, you can't control every thought that comes into your mind. You're not responsible for every thought that comes into your mind. You are responsible for that thought once it arrives in your mind. And so that thought came into her mind. And where, where do sometimes thoughts come from? The devil can send a bad thought into your mind, certainly. And I guarantee you, the accuser, the Bible says, is who the devil is. He's accusing us all the time. And, and his favorite, his, his, his home base, his base of operations sometimes is right in our mind. So you know what he did? He accused that little girl at an early age that it was her fault that she had danced and enticed her older brother who knew better. And she carried with her for years that it was her fault that he sexually abused her. Let me ask you a question, a five-year-old. I mean, right? Like, How does a five-year-old dance that leads to that? Here's my point. All thoughts are not reality. And this girl carried that thought for a long time. And for a long time, she really truly believed that it was her fault that her brother molested her. 
Why? Because she accepted a truth. Accepted a thought as truth. Or, or maybe this. Maybe, maybe, maybe here's a thought pattern. Maybe you had a spouse and that spouse cheated on you. Not once, not twice. They cheated for years. But you kept telling yourself for years that it was your fault. It was your fault because you weren't enough. If you were prettier, he wouldn't have done that. We're talking about old thinking patterns. Or maybe, maybe in, in finances, maybe you're an adult and you struggle with money. You struggle, you never have enough. It doesn't matter if you get a raise, you get a better job, it's always constantly a money problem. And here's why, maybe as a child you constantly heard uh, just negativity around money. And, and maybe you heard things like, man, we can't afford that. 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 What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Money grows on trees, on trees, on trees, on trees. And that is what is still in your mind. And so whenever maybe your children come to you, that's that old thinking, that old operating system, that old thought pattern that, that literally embedded in your mind as a child, it, it still resonates in your mind today. Listen, we got to fix our thinking. Someone say it with me. Ready? Fix my thinking. Say it with me. Here we go. Fix my thinking. We got to fix our thinking. Fix our thinking. So number one, we got to ask the Holy Spirit for help. If we're going to replace the old negative, we got to ask the Holy Spirit for help. Number two, he'll help us uninstall and reinstall from negative thinking to fixing our thinking to good thoughts to things that are true, things that are honorable, things that are right, pure, lovely, and admirable, things that are excellent. Think about things that are excellent and even worthy of praise. And then the third step and the last step is check every thought. Check every thought. Steph and I, I think I may have told this once, but it's so funny, I'm gonna tell it again. Um, Steph and I were in an airport um, not too, uh, uh, not too long ago, maybe in the last year and a half or so, we were in this airport and Stephanie needed, um, before we left the house, she needed like a different bag. She she needed a bag she could carry on the plane. And I had a brand new bag. I picked it up at a leadership conference. You know, it was one of those like burlap bags. And uh, so I was like, hey, babe, use this. Like, this is perfect. She's like, oh, that's perfect. So she put her stuff in there and a laptop and Bible and some prayer books. You know, there's a book in there about, you know, spiritual warfare and all that stuff. And so anyways, so we're coming through security. We're coming through security. And, uh, you know, I, if you're like me, I always think, did I get everything out of my backpack? You know, like I've, I've, from time to time, maybe I have a pocket knife in there or something like that. So did I get my pocket knife out? Right. And uh, so just talking about our thoughts, you know, I'm like, I know my pocket knife is not in there. I'm all right. Well, we're coming up to it. And sure enough, we're checking our bags and, and uh, thank God for TSA, man. They're there and they're checking everything. And then all of a sudden there's a problem. You've probably experienced it before where they say, whose bag is this, right? And it's serious because this is a serious thing that's happening. And so they said, whose bag is this? And I was like, well, that's my bag, but Steph, that's... And she's like, oh, that's, you know, Stephanie. She's like, that's my bag. And all smiley face, man, just full of joy. She's kind of just, you know, just kind of bebops over there to them. And um, they're very serious. And they said, please come right over here. Come right over here. So here's what happened. Man, that bag that I loaned her, it was brand spanking new. It tested positive for explosives. Brand new bag. So they're over there and, and they're like, man, this is what? And they're, they're starting to talk to her and they're asking all these questions. And then they, they, they get the stuff out and uh, man, they start swabbing, right? Like her hands and her fingers and her hands tested positive for explosives also and she looks back at me and she literally she's like i'm going to kill you <laughs> i think that's what she said if i remember correctly and uh you know but and, but i, I kind of thought it was funny so i got out my iphone i got out my iphone and i began to start to record it like i thought it was funny because I, I knew she didn't have any explosives she didn't think it was so funny and she's like if you don't if you don't put that away maybe that's what it was she's like if you record this i'm gonna kill you you know and uh, so anyways she's i mean she's serious now because they're serious they're checking her they really think right and as we look back on that now and we laugh and it's really funny but it was not funny for her that day it was not funny it was not funny at all but you know what, as I was working on this message, 
I thought about it. You know what? What if we examined every thought? I mean, really, that's the picture. The picture is that you're your own boss. That the thoughts that come into your mind may not have got there by yourself. Maybe the enemy, maybe the devil put a thought in your mind. But once it's there, you have the authority and you have, I want to say the privilege, but you also have the responsibility of examining and checking every thought, every thought, every thought. Listen to this, 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. I read this last week. I want to get into it a little bit more. 2 Corinthians, Paul says this to the uh, church at Corinth. He says, we demolish arguments, arguments. See, if you're going to replace your old thinking, the devil, he, he's, he's not just going to let it happen easily. I mean, you, you're going to have to really work at this. And the, 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 the devil is going to have a fight. He's going to have a battle right in your mind. So in other words, if you're here and you're like, you know what? Yeah, mind monsters. I need to get rid of this. I need to replace old thinking with new thinking. I need to do that. So Holy Spirit, I need you to help me. And yeah, there's definitely some old patterns, some old ways of thinking. Um, maybe some old negative self-talk that I need to uninstall so I can reinstall what is pure, what is right, what is excellent. Okay, I got that, Pastor Tim. And now you're telling me I need to check every thought. Okay, that's right. Even if it seems like nothing's wrong with it. So a thought comes into your mind. Maybe you walk into, maybe you walk into the lunchroom and uh, some teenagers start laughing. They start laughing. Some students, man, they're right there. They start laughing. You really don't know them. And so immediately you think they're laughing at me. Something's wrong with me. No, you check it right there and you check it right there and you reject it right there. And the devil, he, he's, he's not just going to stop. He's going to make sure that that happens again. And so we demolish arguments. Sometimes that battle in your mind is an argument. You're like, no, nah, that's not true. Let me be really real with you. Last Sunday, or maybe I say it this way. Let me be very transparent, real vulnerable with you. Last Sunday, after I preached that message, you remember that? I held up my Bible. I held up my Bible and I read from you from one of my quiet times. And, and I held it up. I held up the Bible and I, I read to you something that God had spoke to my heart in a quiet time. And it had everything to do with anxiety and even panic attacks that I had had because I had believed that I was less than. I believed that since I was a kid. And that old had stuck with me for so long. And so I read that to you guys. I read that to you, that I'm not less than, I'm more than. The lie was, I'm less than. And then I wrote in my Bible, I'd had so many panic attacks through the years because I believed that I was less than. I, I doubted my own worth and I over-exaggerated other people's worth. Well, Sunday, I got home after 101. Three, it's a little after three, and I was exhausted. I was just tired, man. So I lay down to sleep, and I want to tell you something. You want to talk about a battle? You want to talk about uh, arguments back and forth in your head? I lay down to sleep, hoping that I could just fall asleep and get some rest, and you know what? It was like the enemy showed up, and man, he, he was not happy about the freedom that many of you experienced. And I literally felt like two hours on Sunday afternoon that the enemy just kept, I mean, like rapid fire. Like he just kept putting lie after lie after lie after lie after lie. I had been open and vulnerable. And it was like the enemy wanted to try to undo what God did. And so literally, man, it was a struggle. And the battle was real. Yesterday, uh, Dr. Ben uh, and I were talking to the gym. He said, how can I pray for you? And I said, Dr. Ben, I'll tell you, man, since that message Sunday, I feel like it has been an open, all-out attack. And I'm talking about like a, a new level and a new devil. Like the devil has just, man, come after me uh, just since the message Sunday. That's how you can pray for me. Well, Paul said, we demolish arguments in every pretension that sets itself up or against the knowledge of God. And here it is. And we take captive every thought. Every thought. And that's what I mentioned last week. That you need to tackle. And the negative thoughts, you need to terminate. 
So I pray that prayer, Lord, help me to tackle and terminate negative thoughts. Lord, help me to tackle and terminate bad thoughts, bad thinking, bad ways of thinking, negative self-talk, whatever that is that's been in there for a while. God, I'm going to check every thought, but Lord, help me to literally take captive. That's what the scripture says. Arrest. That's the picture. So watch. Here it is and we're through. The next time, the next time that the enemy sends a thought into your mind, or maybe you just allowed a thought to be in your mind for decades and it comes around and you know, you're like, ah, ah. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to arrest that thought right there. And I want you to say, God, I give you this thought to you. And you know what? God can take care of that thought. He can take care of that thought. So this is what we're going to do. We are learning four steps, right? We're learning to recognize the enemy. We're learning to reject the lies. And we're going to replace the negative. Next week, I want you to come back. Literally, as you know, I'm not here. I'm on screen at every campus. It's a video message. And I thank God for technology. I'm actually right now live. I'm in Israel. But next Sunday, I want you to come back. We're going to talk about retraining our brain retraining our brain and I'm so excited I'm going to do the message in Israel and I want you to come and I want you to bring a friend with you because the truth is we all can retrain our brain so you come back and uh, let's just pray can we do that let's just pray let's pray that God will help us fix our thinking let's pray right now bow your heads would you let's close our eyes Holy Spirit thank you for living inside of us I pray that you would help all of us, that when that battle happens in our mind, Lord, that we wouldn't just accept negative thinking. Lord, that we wouldn't just accept old ways of thinking. But God, we'd realize, Lord, that you can help us, Holy Spirit, but we also can help. And we can help, God, by uninstalling and reinstalling the right way to think. And God, Lord, I pray that you would remind us, Holy Spirit, to check every thought, every thought that comes in, Lord, that we'd say, is that right? Is that excellent? Is that pure? I mean, is that an honorable thought? Is it true? And if it's not, God, I pray that we would arrest that thought and turn that thought over to our authority, which is you, God. And I pray that you would help us all to walk in freedom because we have new thinking. And I prayed in Jesus' name. The scripture teaches us that all of us have a sin problem and that sin has come in. It's in us. That's why we sin. We sin because it's in us. Here's the good news. The good news is that God did something about our sin. You see, the payment of sin is death. So Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sin. And the Bible says that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. You know why he did that? Because he's for us. And scripture teaches us that if you and I will confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, and if we'll believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we'll be saved. So right now, here's what I'd like us to do. Right now, with with heads bowed and eyes closed, I'd like to invite you to pray this prayer with me. You're not talking to me. You're not praying through me. You're actually praying right to God. I'm just going to lead us in this prayer. Heads bowed and eyes closed. If you say, you know what? Man, maybe, maybe for so long, (laughs) your negative thinking has, has said, there's no God. Or I don't need God. Or I don't believe in God. And today you're saying, you know what? I want to change my thinking. I'm going to, I'm going to get a new way of thinking. I'm going to say yes to God. If you want to do that, I want you to pray this prayer. And, and everybody that is a Christian, pray it with us. We'll pray it together. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Will you say this? You say, Jesus, I thank you for loving me. I feel your love and I accept your love. I believe that Jesus is Lord. And I believe that Jesus rose again. And God I give you my life. I receive your life. Now teach me how to live. If you prayed that prayer, 
I believe Jesus has come in. He's done away with your sin. The old is gone and the new has come.